Having a physical disability and poor mental health is a battle many are fighting and winning. This is Hashtag I Got This. In this episode of Hashtag I Got This, Disability Living with Disability, a married couple, both in wheelchairs, figure out how to navigate life's ups and downs together, and a mother and a daughter share a special bond to help cope with the same physical and mental fears. A typical day out for this fun-loving couple. Doop-a-doop-a-doo. Rolling through the mall, doing some window shopping for the latest fashions. Yeah, I could so picture you then in that one. They get a bit of blood work done, grab a coffee, a few groceries. Uh, coming up to the gate, get behind me, please. Yep. Some couples stroll arm in arm. Christine and Jeff Strauss move as a cohesive unit in their wheelchairs. Jeff is partially sighted. Christine has limited use of her hands and legs. So Christine has a power wheelchair and um, she is able to control that just with a control stick. And then I, being unable to see, hang on to the back of her chair so she can help me get through things. And she gives me audio signals like coming up on a tight space, you need to go behind me. I basically act as Jeff's eyes and he acts as my hands. And together we make an awesome team. <laughs> Pretty much a full person. <laughs> <laughs> on most days, yes. <laughs> I'm Jeff Strauss, I'm 34, I have arthritis and uveitis. I'm Christine Strauss, I'm 41, and I have osteorheumatoid arthritis, and we are husband and wife. Jeff and Christine have created a life together neither thought possible, especially Christine. I got sick when I was about six years old. At the time, we didn't know what was going on, and it took a couple of years, actually, for us to discover that I was bit by a tick and developed Lyme's disease. Those couple of years were dark. Christine spent most of her time in hospital. She had no friends, no fun. No one could figure out what was wrong as she continued to get worse. Actually, around age eight, I actually contemplated suicide because I wasn't sure if I'd be able to live through this. It's a lot of loneliness and isolation. I know for me personally, it was because of the complications in my case, it felt very much like there's no one on the planet that even has a clue of what is going on. Fortunately, some relief for her mind with a diagnosis of Lyme disease, but it had taken so long and so many medications to treat it, Christine developed severe arthritis that went on to ravage her body. And most of my joints are pretty much fused or locked. My hands are extremely crippled, my elbows are locked. My knees are locked. Um, my jaw is very limited for opening and closing. So it's very challenging to move when I have to. She's had hip and shoulder replacements, broken legs that haven't healed properly, endless physiotherapy and relapses. By her mid-teens, thoughts of suicide were back. Is it even worth trying anymore? Because you just you don't see any progress at all. The roller coaster of ups and downs was exhausting, just mentally exhausting. Yeah, if I could have, I probably would have. I just I could not get out of bed to do anything. I could count on my on one hand how many people have actually stuck with me through this whole thing, and that includes family, which is really really sad. Maybe Christine didn't have people around her, but she had something else inside of her, art. I wanted to be anywhere but where I was, which is where my art really saved me, basically. You're laying in a hospital bed, you can barely move, not that you even want to move. I started painting in my head, which I'd been doing for years anyway. You like just look at an object in the room and just start outlining it with your eyes. I could add color and feeling to the painting in my head. Christine had been interested in art ever since she was a little kid, but now it became her therapy. And even after the arthritis placed her in a chair permanently, she found a way to bring those paintings from her mind to life. 
started out with the concept of the heart of nature, and we'll see how this turns out. She uses a computer program that simulates acrylic paints, watercolors, different brushes and techniques, even the amount of pressure the brush makes. Christine is able to navigate this complex program by moving and pressing the mouse with her wrist. When she's done, the painting is printed on canvas. I think the thing I love the most about painting is just the idea that I'm putting me on the canvas. And on the canvas, I can be anything. In this body, I can't be what I want to be. Canvas, anything goes. And that is very, very liberating in the mind because you're not physically there. You are in the painting as you're painting. And being disabled, that's one of the most freeing things you could ever do. Christine gained confidence, joy, and purpose. She learned to live with her progressive disease and realized she wanted more. Okay, I can't remember who goes first. Uh, I'm dark. So she moved out of her parents' house and into a group home for young adults with disabilities. That's where she met her mate. Jeff was coming in with another um, guy in a chair. It was winter time, so he had his leather jacket on and this really cool cap and his dark sunglasses. I thought, hmm. <laughs> this is, name. yeah, I thought, hmm, this is, I, I think I can stay here. Nice eye candy. And that's when the love story begins. Stay tuned. We'll be back with hashtag I got this. Welcome back. This is hashtag I got this. I love this picture of you and your groomsmen with the black and white. Christine and Jeff Strauss never get tired of flipping through their wedding album. After meeting at a group home, the happy couple got married and moved into their own house. Christine has crippling arthritis in her joints. Jeff also has arthritis and partial sight. Like his wife, he's had multiple surgeries on his eyes as well as hip and knee replacements. Both have struggled through dark times in their lives and it's still not easy living with a progressive disease, but their shared experiences create a bond. We were able to connect on that level and be able to have some understanding of each other on that, and that's immensely helpful for dealing with the loneliness that we both dealt with. I think it's very, very normal for people to go through regular ups and downs with mental health, mood. Um, it, life's, life's difficult. It's hard for everybody, and or you know that's that's what it is. It's not always going to be a perfect story, but it's worth it to keep on getting up and trying to see if there's something intriguing with a new day. Like a new recipe, so Jeff loves to cook. Small little dish here to mix up some of the spices in. Give me a shot if you need help. Yeah. I'm just going to continue painting. Christine helps with any visuals, like finding ingredients. On the flip side, Jeff helps his wife eat. She also has home care throughout the day. They found a rhythm that works for them. It makes it tricky sometimes just with trying to keep the line between caregiver and spouse um, clear, because it can very, very easily slip from a spouse becoming a caregiver and we don't want that. We decided yeah. from the start, we want to purposely make sure we are on the lookout for that and try to not let that happen. That's exactly what they should be doing. Ashley Springer is an occupational therapist who helps people with disabilities become more independent. She says the role of being both a caregiver and a spouse is challenging, but in some ways, it's a great advantage when both individuals have a disability people all the time who are both going through some kind of a physical or mental health disability that are living together, married or part of a family and caring for each other. Um, and lots of times with experiencing things for ourselves, we can recognize it in other people. So if there is, okay, I think something more is going on with my spouse, I might be able to recognize that more and say, okay, this is a change in you. We need to get you other help or we need to do something differently. Um, so there can definitely be those benefits. It's not, shouldn't be something to be afraid of, but again, just that communication piece, knowing 
what your role is um, and defining those roles and boundaries but also it definitely adds that extra element of support in that relationship too. Christine and Jeff have an open line of communication and keep watch on each other's mental health. They make a point to get out of the house for new adventures. I haven't been swimming in probably 25 years. I uh, went swimming for the first time a few weeks ago. And that was phenomenal. The chairlift rotates and lowers Christine into the pool, making it an activity they can enjoy together. Don't see ourselves as typical disabled person. Yeah, we I just see Jeff, he just sees me. It's nice to have somebody else with who you can share a lot of the same kind of insights and experiences and be... The same chaotic adventures that we inevitably seem to find ourselves in. Yeah. And I think sense. that's a good perspective for us. No matter what it is, up or down, it's an adventure. Getting coffee is another excursion this couple enjoys. So change? Thank you. Coming up beside you so you can put the coffee on my tray. Once again, it's teamwork to order and drink, as Jeff puts a coffee cup holster around Christine's neck so she can drink it from a straw. Uh, got it. Okay. Learning to live with your own disability and someone else's takes time, trust, and honesty. While the Strausses are equal peers in such a relationship, there is a slightly different situation in another household, where a mother and young daughter live together with the same disease. What is your full name? Paisley Grace Gobey. And how old are you? Five years old. What's your favorite color? Lime green. How many bones have you broken? Three. And what's the name for your special bones? Osteogenesis imperfecta. A big word for a little girl. Paisley, what do you want to make for lunch? Pizza! Okay. Osteogenesis imperfecta, also known as brittle bone disease, is a rare gene mutation that results in fragile bones that break easily. Not only does Paisley live with OI, so does her mom, Chelsea Gobey. So osteogenesis imperfecta literally means imperfect bones from birth. I have broken about 30 bones. It might be a little more or less. Some like fingers and toes I quit keeping track of, so I'm not sure. But yeah, it's around 30 for sure. I have type one, which is the most common and it's considered mild. And so my body doesn't have enough collagen. So the bones are affected, but also uh, my muscles are really weak. I'm very hypermobile and my joints are lax. I also have dentine genesis imperfecta. So it affects the makeup of my teeth. So they're brittle as well. Um, people with OI can have a wide range of symptoms like hearing loss, cardiac and lung issues, thin blood vessels. There's no cure for OI, but because Chelsea's is mild and manageable, she and her husband decided to have a baby, even though the risk of passing the disease is 50%. It was a lot of my anxiety and like just thinking, am I gonna be able to handle this? And, but I ultimately thought I'm gonna regret it if I don't. Chelsea had a great childhood. Her brother and their mom also have OI, so she's become a bit of an expert dealing with breaks and pains. But she wasn't quite prepared for just how much having a baby would affect her body and ultimately her mind. It wasn't until I got pregnant with Paisley that I broke a rib. I was coughing and everything went downhill from that and then when she was born because of her oi we couldn't lift her under her arms for six months so we had to lift her from behind and up and i hurt my back and then from there i was just less and less active and um, she also had severe acid reflux so for 14 months it was up in the night constantly holding her upright and i injured my neck doing that and since then, I feel now like before OI was just part of my life, and now I feel like it dominates my life. Chronic pain is just constant in like my eye, jaw, 
neck, shoulder. It was a lot of anxiety over, is this how my life's going to be now? I was very active. I was teaching full time. I did my masters at night while I was teaching. I can't do a lot of the things that I feel made me who I was. And the crayons, yay! Chelsea's anxiety went through the roof when she had Paisley. She was scared to let others hold her, nervous that Paisley would start moving around, and is still terrified when she's out of sight. It affects my mind a lot. It's such a struggle to have grown up with OI and know how badly I wanted to do things. And then as a mom, understand my mom's anxiety. And I can't just keep her in a bubble, but I also have to protect her. So I think the most difficult thing mentally is how exhausting it is to constantly look for dangers and not be pessimistic and not let her see that I'm nervous. But it's just, yeah, it's tiring to always think of the bad things that could happen. And Chelsea has good reason to be afraid of this disease. At four years old, I was at a birthday party and sitting out on a picnic table and I I was wearing party shoes and I slipped getting off and I banged my head on the ground and got a subdural hematoma. So I was, it's pretty like miraculous that I didn't have any lasting effects because they weren't sure if I would survive it or I had bleeding in the brain and I had to, I remember it all so well, like everything about it. But after that, I was very scared to hit my head or to fall. And I see a psychologist now to deal with anxiety and a lot of it's health related. And she said, I probably have PTSD from it because I get really scared with Paisley's head. She does give me good strategies on how to avoid thinking about catastrophic things. The psychologist tells Chelsea to set aside time each day to think about what makes her anxious and challenge those scary thoughts rationally. Chelsea tries to follow this advice, but as her daughter gets older, she gets more concerned about Paisley's mental health, too. Stay tuned. We'll be back with Hashtag I Got This. Welcome back. This is Hashtag I Got This. Chelsea Gobey has been seeing a psychologist to deal with anxiety from having osteogenesis imperfecta, or OI, but now she's starting to worry about how her anxiety is impacting her five-year-old daughter who has the same disease. I think about her mental health a lot because she has had a lot of anxiety in the past year. I say to her, like, this is a special bond that we have and you're not alone because I totally understand what you're going through and I went through the same thing, but yeah, it's still, it's still hard. Occupational therapist Ashley Springer says parents have to be careful about projecting their own feelings onto their kids. It is more likely for children to develop anxiety or other mental health issues if a parent is really projecting that because it can be hard for a child to separate out initially, okay, what, what are my own emotions and feelings versus what mom's feeling or dad's feeling and how can we work through that and in a healthy, beneficial way? How can I let her kind of experience a few things, but I'll be there to guide and support her through some of these, maybe put in a few boundaries, but she needs to be able to kind of test the water a little bit in a safe way. Fortunately, Paisley is a cautious kid by nature. She loves to draw, do crafts, and play doctor with her Barbies. She gets infusions once a year at a clinic in Montreal to increase her bone density, and it's helping, but she still had some breaks. And this is the cast when I was one. One, this is the cast when I was two, and this is the cast when I was three. To build muscle strength and help prevent breaks, this mother-daughter duo also attend regular physio and exercise therapy. Put that elbow in your back pocket. Let your eyes follow your hands as you rotate slightly through your core. Good. Keep your knees stable. Toes tucked. Looks good. 
As scary as being active is for someone with OI, Chelsea says the physio is easing her chronic pain and finally allowing her mind to relax. Paisley has been in physio since she was three months old and has become quite a pro. All right, Paisley, are you ready for this obstacle course? Yeah. All right, high five. Good stuff. All right, so I want you to crawl underneath these hurdles. Okay. Paisley works on her strength, coordination, and agility by walking on balance beams and weaving through obstacles and climbing on platforms. She still needs to remember to be careful. No, no, sit. Okay, and her mom good may job. still need reminders yeah. to take a breath. But they are both making progress on this journey together. Chelsea feels stronger physically and is hopeful about the future. So much so, she's expecting another child. She believes she will cope with any challenges better than before because the joy of her daughter's smile far outshines the fear of a broken bone. <laughs> Navigating relationships while navigating disability won't keep this sweet mother-daughter pair or this adventurous married couple from saying, Hashtag, I got this. Narrator, Martin Yap. Video production, Tara Yolan Productions, Inc. Integrated Described Video Specialist, M. Williams. Regional Content Specialist, Jim Crisco. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director of Production, Kara Nye. Director of Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Programming and Production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2020, AMI Accessible Media, Inc.